Namaste beautiful yogis. Welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga. I'm Ali and today we are doing a class which is a part of the 30-day Core Awakening Progressive Vinyasa series which is on my website for the month of October. We'll be diving deep in the deep core muscles. Pun, <laughs> pun intended. And I will leave the program on available for anytime you want to come back to it but now we're going to do it all all of us together in october and i'll be sharing some of the classes on here for the youtube community otherwise the program in its entirety is on my website under membership and today's class is called core repair because we're going to repair and awaken and connect to the deep abdominal muscles and thus strengthen the pelvic floor the abdominal muscles the lower back and the hips so this is called core repair and will target the core will target the hips pain in the back especially if it's caused by weak a weak core or poor posture so are you ready to flow with strength and ease mm -hmm. Starting at the front of the mat, bring your hands over the heart and take a big breath in, opening the chest. Exhale and feel the back side of your body releasing, softening, and at the same time widening. So we're finding space and openness, but at the same time relaxation and letting go of the tension that might be residing in the shoulders and back. And again, inhale, broadening, opening, lifting. Exhale, drop the shoulder blades down and let everything open naturally. Exhale, softening the back, relaxing the back, widening the back. Feel your feet connecting with the earth, spread the toes, lift the arches, establish proper connection, foundation with Connection with the floor, grounding, foundation in the body. And again, inhale and really pay attention to your breath. The quality of the breath. Do you feel freedom in your breath? And exhale, soften. Chin parallel to the floor and lift and lengthen through the crown of the head. Feel as if you're becoming taller as you stand and as you breathe, you're being stretched and lengthened. And now with the next inhalation, bring your awareness and you can even bring your hands over your belly. And begin to feel the abdominal muscles, whether you think they're strong or weak or whether they feel strong or weak, begin to feel them. Inhale, Mula Bandha or the Kegel muscles connecting and begin to contract isometric contractions, the two sides, the tra transverse abdominis coming inward. And as you exhale, feel them forming. A few more breaths, really focusing on the quality of your abdominal wall. Sending love to it, appreciation and acceptance of where it is at. We want to accept our body as it is and even if we are trying to better it, improve it and serve it at the same time, I want to accept it as it is in its perfection and in its beauty. Inhale the hands over the head, clasping. Drop the shoulder blades down, lengthen the tailbone slightly and feel how that alignment of the lower back so that we're finding the natural curve in the spine allows us to further connect with the deep abdominal muscles. Reach over to one side and look up and invite that openness and 
sensation of elongation and stretching into your body. Center, opposite side. Really lengthen. Try to keep both sides of both shoulders on top of each other or in the same plane. And back to center, open the arms out to the sides, reaching through the fingertips, widening the space between the collarbones, finding space and openness, soften the shoulders, smile, bend the knees, pull the belly in and reach over the head. Take the tailbone just slightly and feel how that elongation, so we're extending the tailbone slightly down, feel how that allows you to Use the lower belly muscles to contract and lift here. And exhale, forward bend. You can keep the knee slightly or as much as you need bent. And just walk the hands over to one side. Soften and feel the head and the neck relaxing opposite side again relaxing really try to let go and be in this moment not rushing to the next moment but just allow yourself to enjoy the fact that you can do forward bend you're in a position to be on the mat and just slow down pause put life on pause and be here now that allows the nervous system to reset and if you're dealing with um, stress and tension in the body pain weight gain or anything like that it allows you to repattern the nervous system great inhale grab your shin bones touch your shin bones look ahead of you and step it back plank spread the fingers wide 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 open press the heels away from you now feel free to be here on the knees and really, really asymmetrically contract the core muscles. So pull, 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 feel, feel, feel. You can always do planks from your elbows. And another variation here is to bring a chair in front of you and do them from a chair so that way they're way easier. So you can place your hands on the chair and really enjoy a plank that is modified to your knees. Great, lower down onto your belly. Inhale, elbows in, keeping them bent, lengthen, open, and pause here, opening the upper back, lengthening the back of the neck, and exhale, downward facing dog. <sighs> And breathe. Inhale and come up onto all fours. You can take the toes under and bring your knees underneath the hips wrist underneath the shoulders. Here we're going to waggle the tail and look over the right shoulder. Turn your body to the right and look at your body. And opposite side. And some of us don't have to try really hard because <laughs> we can see the body. And again, shift and shift and feel the spine here. We oftentimes immobilize the spine with long hours of sitting and this can begin to awaken it and bring movement back and balance in ways that it needs. So it's really, really good for back pain, certain types of back pain. Of course, everybody benefits from different things, so we can't quite put everybody in the same category, but feel your body and feel what, what benefits you. And again, change, feel that movement. 
want the spine to be flexible and young. Change. Excellent. So now walk your knees a little further back and keep your core engaged and lower the hips on one side. And over to the other. Find the place that is juicy and most benefits you. And again, change. Change. And two more, one on each side, right? Feel it. And left. And coming back on all fours, line up everything so that the joints are stacking. Hips on top of the knees. And shoulders on top of the wrist. Really paying attention to your alignment. Spread the fingers wide open. Take the right leg up. Flex the foot and turn the toes down so that your hips are level. Take the left arm up and allow your core to awaken, to connect, so that you are putting very little effort in holding this. The core is awakened and effortlessly. Let's bring the elbow to the knee and pull the belly in. Exhale. Inhale. Try to keep the hips level. Exhale. It's very tempting here to get all crooked and open the hip and just be all over the place and open the foot and do everything but align. So try to align. Exhale. Three. Pull the belly in and really flex. Four and five and don't worry i'll give you challenging things if you think this is easy don't <laughs> don't worry all right opposite side feel your balance and alignment and let's take the left leg up level the hips pull the belly in reach feel again the alignment of the hips are they equal distance from the floor are the shoulders aligned Scan your body for tension and exhale. And let's do elbow to knee, one, and pull the belly in. Inhale, two. You can pull Mula Bandha. Three. Four. And five. And step it down. And let's sit onto the bum and pull the belly in and lower down onto your back, laying back. Lifting the legs, you can press your elbows down and press the lower back into the floor. Now push your knees away from you and feel the activation of your core here. So you can have your knees a little over your belly and that is a little easier for weak cores and you can push them away as long as your lower back does not come off the floor. So you're holding here and you can lower one leg and then the other, but that is optional. You can just hold Ooh, and release. So if you hold this, isomet the isometric work here is so great that you actually don't need a lot of <sighs> crazy work. So now again, press the lower back into the floor. You can check with your hands. Place them under the back to see if you're pressing. And now push your knees away so that the knees come over the hips. Lower one leg. 
do without swinging and without removing the back. It is not easy, so you can just hold this. Great. Pelvic tilt and again scooping the lower back, a lower belly up and really contracting all this muscle, it's activating them, including the Kegel muscles or Mola Banda. So let's go. Pelvic tilt, the tailbone lifts up and the lower back presses down. Hold, release. Exhale, one more. Let's do bigger lifts here. We're gonna lift in bridge and release. Let's go one, two, really every time focus on that lower belly musculature. Three, four. The alignment here really allows you to connect with your muscles and awaken them so that you can use them properly for the rest of the class. I wanna say seven, eight, nine and ten and we're ready for a stomach vacuum so lift again as we were lifting in a bridge but with the tailbone extended and now pull the belly in this is a beautiful stomach vacuum keep at it because it targets actually the lower belly a lot oftentimes you can do the upper belly, but the lower belly is a little inactive. So this one targets the lower belly. So let's go again. Exhale and then hollow. Beautiful, one last, it really, really targets the lowest part of the belly, the lowest part of the abs. And now we're gonna lift the head off the floor lower back on the floor, reach between, and you can touch your belly, make sure that it's firing up, contracting, mind-body connection. When we bring the hands on the muscles that we're targeting, they fire up better. Release, and drop the knees to your right, softening the hips. Opposite side, softening the hips. We're ready to jump in the flow very soon. Come back up and now drop the, drop the tailbone on the floor. So again, flatten the back on the floor, close the eyes and imagine your muscles contracting. You don't have to actually contract them. They can be as they are passive, inactive, but in your mind, contract them and imagine them flexing because we're awakening that mind-body connection. Um, I was reading a study about a, stu uh, a study that was done on flexing muscles versus imagining that you're flexing them. And the results were amazing. Just flexing them in our mind worked really well because yes, that's how the body works. It's a one organism and the mind is extremely powerful in controlling the entire system. All right, one more. Imagine you're flexing your muscles, just imagine it. And now you can flex them. Mm -hmm. 
great. This was for me the best flexing I could have ever done because it already was triggered by the mind. And we're gonna flip over seamlessly and come into downward facing dog. Give me a tiny vacuum, stomach vacuum. Now it's targeting the middle portion of the stomach the most, but again the entire belly. Pulling, cinching everything in, toning the internal organs. Inhale the right leg up, step it through. Warrior one reaching over the head and you can here work with the alignment. You can bend and straighten the knee and just move in different ways to just feel the pose. And again, as you move her up the core, so everything comes from this section. Every move you feel the body and the movement coming from the core because in the dictionary uh, under definition for core it says the most central fundamental most important part of something so the core is literally the most important part of our physicality and because everything is interconnected it tends to work on those chakras that are involved here and on the core beliefs and the value system of course the core works all the way from the shoulders all the way down past even the perineum into the inner thighs so it is working on a large group of muscles including the back for those of you who are asking what what is a core actually it is a very it's it's we can talk about it a lot <laughs> but it involves a lot of muscles and a certain level of awareness of course all right exhale down upper dog chaturanga is only optional for those of you who have been with me for a long time and don't mind it inhale the left leg and come up you're lucky though because today i'm underslept so i'm taking it very very easy um, i've decided to do gentle flow for you so you can move here and again as you move feel how your core is connecting you can touch it again Hold the pose, you can step your feet a little wider apart if you need to, if that's comfortable on your hips, or you can take the textbook alignment, both of them are really proper, whatever works for you. Spread the toes open, lift the arches, and feel the hips here. When you spin the right hip in, feel, feel how that changes the alignment. Exhale straight back, plank, always stick the plank that's appropriate for you, either from your knees and flatten the back or from your feet and then lower down, either chaturanga or upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Exhale, the right. inhale, sorry, the right leg up, step it through, warrior two. and reverse it you can wrap it back and around lift lengthen deep a little deeper maybe soften the shoulders back to warrior two and you can clasp behind open the chest so we want to work on game posture open the chest soften and lower down in side angle variation 
fire up the core, exhale, and feel it working. And back to warrior two. Rest in the back of the body, lean into the back of the body here. Exhale, both hands down, spin the back heel straight up and take the right arm up. And here you can take it up three times, so lower it and give it a good spin. And lower it and give it a good spin and feel that movement through the spine. Beautiful. You can hold this twist. You can roll onto the outer edges of the hips here, allowing the hip to stretch and open. Open the chest too, lifting, reaching, and plank, chaturanga, cobra, or up dog, and down dog. Coming back to your breath. Feeling, allowing yourself to tune in and, and feel the hips, feel the core, hamstrings, legs, shoulders, and back. Here the back has a really beautiful opportunity to realign, stretch, lengthen. Take the left leg up, step it through, and spin it up, warrior two. Sit into the back of the body, lean, lean back. Reach up and over, turn the palm of the hand down, soften. Coming up, exhale the hands behind, clasping, soften the shoulders. And here, work with spinning the right hip open, softening the shoulders, softening the space between the collarbones, breathe into your back, and lean forward with the core really active, so everything is opening, stretching, lengthening, and the core is activated, side angle modified, coming up. Warrior two. And let's bring both hands down, turn the back heel up and take the right arm down, left arm up. And you can move this. One, two, three. And now pause and open here, twist. You can drop onto the outer edges of the feet. And blank chaturanga up dog optional second chaturanga down dog inhale the right leg up step it through and we're gonna go up into high lunge hands in prayer and you know it twist if this feels very intense just stay up and bring your hands around in an upright twist soften the spine here and this brings mobility in the spine if it feels good and from here we're going to bring both hands on the outside of the right foot, straighten the legs and flex the feet, drop onto the outer edge of both feet and walk your hands away from you just as far as it feels soft and good. In order to, you can keep the right knee bent in order to stretch the right hip. Great, walk to the front and here we're going to bring the left leg behind the right heel forward bend here i told you that this is gonna have a little bit of back and hip rehab so this is bringing movement stretching mobility in the hips 
you can push your intention with intention push into those hamstring and hip muscles in the back of the leg keep your knee slightly bent if you need to and here very optional but you can take the right arm up and slightly twist to the right if if that brings good mobility and a good stretch into your hips all right both hands on the floor take the left leg up parallel to the floor keep the left hand down now and take the right arm up so this is a more advanced pose but give it a go half half moon revolving great exhale back plank to chaturanga to up dog to chaturanga and i did it on top of my toes to down dog just because it felt good a toe stretch breath come back to your breath all right take the left leg up step it through high lunge and hands in prayer twist lengthen feel the areas in which your body is working here to soften to relax to bring mobility flexibility even flexion keep the back heel up soften the shoulders soften the gaze smile because it makes our day better and here you can straighten the legs and walk walk your hands on the outside of the left leg and find the place that brings the most joy <laughs> in your body all right not everybody loves hip openers so this might feel not extremely joyous for every single one of you but some of you will find this joyous so whether you find it joyous or not, find where it feels beneficial to your body. No pain. No pain, just a nice sensation of opening the hip. And coming back to the front, step your right foot behind the left, forward bend here. pushing into the back of the into the back of the hips and hamstrings especially on the right side Optional, you can take the left arm up. I can even hold the wall here. It's a little bit of cheating, but it does feel good because I'm opening the shoulder. All right, lower both hands down and take the right leg parallel to the floor. Keep the right hand down and spin the left arm up when you're ready for revolving half moon pose. Taking the gaze up usually makes it an advanced pose because it challenges your balance. Now the more beginner version is both hands down and working your way up over time. This pose comes in quickly once we start practicing it. Lift that back heel. Very good. Alright, step it back. Lower down onto your belly. Let's bring the hands underneath the forehead. Lift the right leg up. Try to keep your hips level. You can tuck your toes under if you have to, in order to keep everything aligned. And take the left leg up. And the right. I told you this is gonna target the back. 
left right left one more right left and child pose so the opposite movement here in the back alternating back extensions with back flexions very good again for the spine the twists even the pose from the beginning waggling the tail all of this brings mobility in the spine and when we sit for extended hours over ears it um, immobilizes the spine and it becomes really um, a serious situation so a little bit of stretching throughout the day really can give you your spine longevity but daily yoga that's the best <laughs> facing dog inhale the right leg up step it through high lunge lower the knees or the left knee five times one really keeping everything working and finding really good alignment here two three four five by pointing the back knee back and keeping the front knee back or pointing the back knee straight down all right here we're going to step in staggered squat this is the new pose i've been sharing on the membership or a new exercise and you're going to push everything back again hips back knee back and lower down so the knee comes down left knee towards the ankle and come up and you should feel total work here it's almost like a one-legged squat but a little different three four five six seven eight nine ten stepping onto the right leg take three poses here hands over the heart if you want to work with your balance again balance again comes from the core not only core is just that things that keeps us upright and all interconnected the same as with the fascia tissue it wraps around the body gives us balance as well as fluidity but also it's here so if you want to work on your balance maybe open the arms out and close the eyes see how far you can go with that one Great, stilling the mind as much as we can. Let's do warrior three. And step it back, plank. Chaturanga, cobra up dog, down dog. Take the left leg up, step it through, high lunge. Pointing or directing the back knee back. Let's go one, two, three four five i know that i was doing a lot of explanations on the other side so we did one or two extra so let's just add them in for fun staggered squat one push everything back two three four five six seven eight nine ten I'm up to standing on one leg, triples. So another way to work with your balance is to look over one shoulder and then over the other. Again, this will change your connection to reality. 
This is all real, but again, there is levels. And opposite side. It's funny today, I'm so tired <laughs> because I'm three days underslept that everything inside of me is still. It's just the time is not speeding. It's sometimes we're very stimulated and the mind is moving forward. I'm so still that <laughs> I feel that hmm, I can balance today because I have no <laughs> mind <laughs> rush. My mind is now rushing forward. Oriente, what do you say? Let's do it. Blank. And let's walk the feet in, and the knees are gonna rest between the wrists here. So this is deceivingly easy right now and prepare yourself for the hardest pose ever even though it's the hardest pose ever it's suitable for beginners that's the beauty of this pose and this entire sequence should challenge everybody basically because you fire up the muscles depends on you so here we're gonna pull the belly in almost rounding the back and we're gonna march the knees one at a time in, but feel free to leave the other one on the floor. So one, two, really pull the belly in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now lift the knees off the floor. Spread the fingers open so that your wrists are strengthening, no hurrying, getting stronger over time. And let's march. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take a break, shake it out, dance it out. One more. We're gonna pendulum now. One, two, so the knees are coming to one side and then the other. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, since we're in a really good alignment, let's do a vacuum. Good position for a vacuum. You can bring your hands onto the upper thighs and let's hollow the belly. And release. And one more time, hands on the floor. Lift the knees into the chest, open them out and bring them in. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, and take yogic squat. Here again, this is releasing, it's rehab for the lower back and hips. over one shoulder and then the other and sit back onto your bum and we're going to bring one knee and then the other but keep the chest open and the back straight one two three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's now bring opposite elbow to knee. Same thing, try to keep everything upright. One, two elbows back, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, cross your feet, down dog. Walk your hands to the back of the room. Wrap your elbows around your wrists and the upper body is hanging, relaxing, softening, letting go. And chair pose. Here we're gonna step just a touch wider, whatever feels comfortable. Feet forward and come down into a squat and come back up and finish the squat with a tuck and a lift of the lower abs. So the entire squat, you have to watch your alignment. You can record it on your phone and watch how your back performs. You want to maintain that normal curvature in the lower back. You don't want to round as you lower down because that over time adds up. So lower down as far as you can without our, uh, without removing that normal curvature. So without rounding, lower down, contract, lower down, engage, lower down, awaken, lower down, strengthen, lower down, feel it, lower down, connect. One more, feeling that sensation spreading through your body of strength and alignment, align. All right, now that this for me was very aligning and strengthening, so now just take a few steps side to side, but channel your inner dancer I often bring that into my classes because We'll know what we connect mentally, how we think about dancers. So bringing that awareness and stepping side to side and feeling your entire body connecting and the core activated. And now take steps back with the core leading steps forward. Everything is coming from the core. All the moves are coming from the core. It takes a lot of mindfulness to really, really awaken the sleep parts of the core. Sometimes you will see people, I say that often, people with apps, but no core. So it takes mindfulness to awaken the deep core. All right, inhale over the head. Bring your feet either hip width apart or together. Reach over to one side, side bend. Opposite side, side bend and you can grab onto a wall step the right foot in front of the left lower down and come up lower down and come up ballet style four five six seven eight nine ten opposite side let go of the wall if you can work on the balance which is part of the core Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll treat you to one of the new moves <laughs> that we've been enjoying. I just shared it in a workout called Concise Workout on my website. It's concise because literally you will get every muscle working in a very unique way. So step your right foot in front left foot steps back and across and you're gonna lower down and push the right knee back again for joint alignment knee to knee to ankle staggering the joints pushing the hips back and firing up that body one two three four five six seven eight, nine, ten, and by treat you to, I mean torture you with. <laughs> That's what I mean when I say I'll treat you to a pose. <laughs> opposite side, torture that feels like play and joy and fun. All right, the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. Then let's strengthen the hips. Lift your leg diagonally back. You can touch your hip and see how it's engaging. That's a hip strengthening pose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, both heads. Hands up, exhale, forward fold. Step it back. Plank. Sit down, forward fold. behind you for reverse plank so we're working on the entire posterior chain open reverse plank great and lay down one-legged bridge pose so dig your right heel down and lift one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's to strengthen the lower back booty hamstrings hips opposite side one try to level the hips two three four five six seven eight nine ten drop your right knee down just feel that release change left knee down and now we're going to bring the right ankle above the left knee drop drop them both to the left and you can gently stretch to the right but try to flatten the lower back a passive pose here don't strive let go be and opposite side Softening and relaxing the hip, this really relaxes the hip. If you push that knee away from you, you'll feel it more so you can control how much you're stretching. All right, soles of the feet together, straighten the spine. You can bring the hands underneath your head because this kind of reminds us of watching the clouds. great let's do plow so bring your legs together feel free to bring a pillow underneath your head and shoulders shoulder stand however you want to do it and 
releasing, lowering down. Let's lift the legs, open the knees, reach over the head and either hold here and really isometrically contract the core. You can bring your one of your hands here and feel your obliques and deep abdominal muscles engaging and you can begin to lower one leg at a time. Press the lower back down and then the other. And you can reach up, see how that changes and reach back over the head one two i promise you this will flatten your belly because it really really strengthens the core just do it properly with the lower back down you can reach up you can press your elbows down that makes it a little easier over the head brings a whole nother awareness to it and Hug your knees in. Lay down for Shavasana, the final relaxation. Let your feet drop to the side, hands unsupported. Back of the head wide. Before we go into Shavasana, bring your awareness to your core, abs, belly, and again. Only in your mind, not physically, flex it. Feel your belly, imagine it flexing. Bring in visualization here, awareness of, or the picture of a very strong core, your very strong core. The image of strength and a really, really strong core. And now release that image and lay empty. Just be. Allowing the world and everything around and every sound and every sensation to dissolve so that pure emptiness is invited into your consciousness, into your space. So you have access to your true being and there is emptiness so that we can invite more connection, more love, more purity into that space.
slowly begin to deepen the breath. And point the toes, stretch over head, pull the belly in as you stretch. Bring your feet on the ground, roll onto one side. Press yourself up to sit it, keep your eyes closed. Inhale, reach over the head, and exhale over the third eye. We're always seeing the truth. Over the lips. For expressing from the true self and over the heart and let's bow to our hearts for their forgiveness compassion and love and let's blink the eyes open namaste Thank you all for joining me today and I'll see you soon with another class on here and for everybody that's supporting me on the website. Thank you so much. I'll see you there with uh, the rest of the October series and have a beautiful, beautiful day.